Hello students, welcome to the class. Today we'll be seeing what community psychology is, its history, values and principles, some of its concepts and theories, and how community psychology is related to other fields, and how it has its foundation on empiricism. Before explaining the topic in detail, I would like to ask you a few questions. Do you ever think about how community issues can impact the health and wellness of individuals? Or have you ever wondered how individuals can become active contributors in their communities? Well, these are both major topics of interest within the field of community psychology. And coming to define what community psychology is, Cedar Duncan and Laxerus have stated that no single definition can capture its complexities inherent in its theories and praxis. Praxis is its practical application of theory. So in one of the first textbooks on the topic, Community Psychology, Values, Research and Action by Julian Rappaport, he has noted few points on why it's difficult to define community psychology. He argues that community psychology is a new paradigm, a perspective, a way of thinking that is constantly emerging and it's, a, it's not a fixed entity that can be defined in two or three sentences. So in discussing what community psychology is, he has written following themes. It's ecological nature, that's the relationship between people and environment, the importance to respect every man's right to be different and appreciate cultural relativity and diversity so that people are not judged against one single standard and a focus on social change. Moreover, Rappaport argued that community psychology is concerned with human resource development, political activity, and scientific inquiry. The three elements that are in constant conflict with each other. Therefore, community psychology is a balancing act between values, research, and action. According to the Society for Community Research and Action, which is the Division 27 of American Psychological Association, community psychologists go beyond an individual focus and integrate social, cultural, economic, political, and international influences to promote social change, health, and empowerment at individual and systemic levels. Therefore, community psychology studies individuals and the wider societies and the relationship of individuals to communities and the society. It represents a new perspective for looking at the problems of everyday life, a paradigm shift. It recognizes that many of the problems people confront arise not from the disturbances within their psyches, but from the failures of community systems to adequately socialize and support its citizens. Well, community psychology basically emerged in the 1950s and 60s, but even before that, there are few movements which are quite significant in the emergence of community psychology. For example, the advent of clinical psychology. With the advent of clinical psychology, there was a focus on individual's illness and disorder to gain understanding and prevent and relieve the individual. And the National Association for Mental Health in 1950s, the group which sought to improve the quality of care for mentally ill to prevent mental illness were possible and made available the accurate information for mental health. And in 1920s, there is a child guidance movement which began with the mission to prevent delinquency and avoid mental illness where possible by identifying the first signs of problem. After the World War II, many veterans of the war returned home with various mental health problems, which are called combat neurosis or shell shock. So a hospital called the Veterans Administration Hospital was established to look after this problem. In 1963, federal government passed a law establishing a nationwide program of community mental health centers with the aim to promote the early detection of mental health problems, treat acute disorders, and establish a comprehensive delivery system of services. This approach, which was proclaimed as a bold new approach, 
still retained a strong medical model and clinical approach to mental health problems. So clinical psychologist was rapidly growing at this time, but some of the clinical psychologists began to grow dissatisfied with the training models and the role expectations of clinical psychologists and also the therapies which was dominated by the intrapsychic model of mental health. And there was also a skepticism about the effectiveness of psychotherapy which was raised by Isang's research along with the reliability and validity of diagnosis. Therefore, clinical psychologists began to create a new field of community psychology. And clinical psychologists creating the field were aware of the socio-political conditions impact on the competence and well-being of individuals. So many became active in the great society programs in the 1960s, which included preschool education program, community mental health centers, and community action centers. And soon after that, in 1965, there was a conference held called the Scam Scott Conference, which where several psychologists met to discuss the future of community mental health, as well as discuss the issue of only being involved with problems of mental health instead of the community as a whole. And this conference is considered the birthplace of community psychology. And shortly after that, there was a division established in APA, American Psychological Association, the Division 27, which is called the Society for Community Research and Action. And the Society for Community Research and Action is an international organization devoted to advancing theory, research, and action. And its members are committed to promoting health and empowerment and to prevent problems in communities, groups, and individuals. Therefore, SCRA serves many different disciplines that focus on community research and action. And since that time, the field has continued to grow and several academic journals are also devoted to the topic, including the American Journal of Community Psychology, the Journal of Community Psychology, and the Journal of Community and Applied Social Psychology, and the Community Mental Health Journal. So community psychology, which emerged with the advent of clinical psychology, but soon there was a shift seen away from clinical psychology and as clinical psychologists began to establish a new field where the entire society would be taken into consideration. The values of community psychology reflects different hopes and desires that people have and that are at the heart of community psychology, which includes the hope to be accepted for who we are, hope for companionship, love, acceptance and tolerance, and hope that our individual and collective flaws will not hide out potential and that the diversity will be welcomed and celebrated. This means that they attempt to strengthen people's sense of belonging and commitment with each other, and they value diversity and recognize and respect differences based on, for example, race, ethnicity, gender, class, etc. Now, community psychology is a professional and scientific discipline. Its perspective challenges traditional modes of thought. It avoids blaming the victim for problems or labeling people as deviant and looks at whole ecological system, including political, cultural, and environmental influences, as well as focusing on institutional and organizational factors. Therefore, community psychology emphasizes community and personal strengths and competencies as opposed to weaknesses and pathology. So community psychology principles help define its perspective as well as its priorities. And the first principle of community psychology is its ecological approach. An ecological approach recognizes the importance of historical, environmental, and situational context of people's life. This context might be linked to the roles that other people play 
or the actual physical environment, the legislation and policies framing a particular issue or the representations of people or the problems in the society. So understanding the impact of context will often lead to strategies for intervention that extend beyond working with individual people. And Kelly suggests that there are four principles that govern people in setting that are adaptation, succession, cycling of resources, and interdependence. He says that people adapt to different situations and its demands. And every current context has a history. It has come from a norm, a policy, or an attitude which has to be understood for the proper administration of intervention. Each setting has resources that need to be identified and the possibility for new resources to be developed. A resource perspective emphasizes a focus on strengths of individuals, groups and institutions within the setting and the interventions are more likely to succeed if they build on such existing strengths rather than introduce new external mechanisms for change. And when an intervention is administered on one setting, it will have its impact on another setting, which the community psychology has to understand and recognize to avoid any unexpected consequences. So by taking an ecological approach, community psychologists are adapting a system's perspective in their work. Knowledge about how the social system operates helps community psychologists understand the multiple causes of social problems at different levels, from global to individual levels. So community psychology positively encourages diversity and ensures that in its work, it involves includes people irrespective of class, race, ethnicity, gender, culture, age, and disability. So their ways of working encourages others too to encourage, to welcome diversity. And the next principle of community psychology is prevention. Community psychologists often work with individuals and groups not only to provide immediate intervention, but also to divert resources to prevent an illness from occurring. So they may work with individuals developing self-help strategies or in terms of changing some aspects of the immediate environment that contributes to the problem. So community psychology focuses on ways that are more likely to promote well-being, lead to the empowerment of groups or individuals, and wider scale social change, as well as to prevent problems from occurring. And they might prevent problems at different level. For example, at the primary level, they might identify a problem even before it has started. And at the secondary level, they might identify a problem after it has occurred and prevent it as early as possible. And at the tertiary level, they might try to reduce the negative impact and the duration of the problem. Sometimes they might even take universal preventive interventions where they target the entire population and it may be costly. And sometimes they also take selective preventive interventions where they target subgroups or individuals that have a higher than average risk of developing a disorder. And it might even include rehabilitation. So they bring to their work a commitment to understand problems in different ways and to work with others for better understanding and better use of resources at a local level. So community psychology looks for strategies of working that maximizes the joint resources different professionals or interest groups can bring to a problem. So the other principle of community psychology is collaboration, partnership, and alliances. Relationships with community groups and organizations are viewed as partnerships where each partner makes an important contribution. So community psychologists listen to people about their concerns and viewpoints and together negotiate a way of working towards shared goals. And collaboration with community members to construct research and action projects makes community psychology an exceptionally applied field. And by allowing communities to share their knowledge and contribute to research in a collaborative, fair, and equal manner, the process itself be empowering to citizens. So the last principle of community psychology is evaluation. Evaluation is seen as an essential element. 
it can identify positive and negative aspects of change and contribute important information for both project improvement and for the most efficient use of resources. So sometimes additional training and support for local people in carrying out evaluation is given by community psychologists and it is a key component of community psychologist work. And as evaluation is frequently linked to funding applications, community psychologists are able to access and obtain relevant funding for the local people. Critical community psychology is a branch within community psychology which emphasizes on practice and criticizes the gap between the concepts of psychology and its application in society and community at large. So it is praxis oriented in its efforts to overcome social injustice through social action in collaboration with disadvantaged people. So it is applied at individual, relational and collective level. At individual level, it embarks on health promotion, prevention, consciousness raising and transformation of setting. At the relational level, it celebrates diversity and confronts racism, sexism and classism. It stresses on advocacy for universal services, community capacity building and change and investment in human and economic community development at the collective level. And there is a cycle of praxis in community psychologists' work. Praxis involves the use of theory and methods in social practices in an integrated manner, which in turn is reflected upon and brings about changes in theory and methods. So in order to guide the process of change in social justice organizations, community psychologists have to be clear about values, social and cultural context, people's need and strategic action. When the outcome of these four elements come together, they create a powerful synergy, which is what community psychologists look for when they work in settings for social change. And in their work, community psychologists try to bring about first or the second order change. First order change is where they try to change the individual in a setting to fix a problem and second order change is where they attend to systems and structures involved with the problem to adjust the person environment. So for example, if we take homelessness in first order change, the problem would be solved by providing home to one or many homeless. Whereas in second order change, the issue would be addressed in policies regarding affordable housing. So in all their work, community psychologists' major goal is to empower people because empowerment provides individuals with the sense that they are in control of their own destiny. Examples include reducing child and spouse abuse, eradicating exploitation of women, migrant workers and elderly, and decreasing bias against disabled and mentally ill. Now let us see how community psychology is related with other fields. Community psychology is a relatively young discipline within psychology that grew out of the need to understand how individuals relate to the society at large. While community psychology has many similarities to related field, it is also important to note some major distinctions. For example, community psychology is also centered on research and solving problems, much like clinical psychology. But unlike clinical psychology, which focuses only on the individual, community psychology also looks at the entire community and community psychology also differs from sociology and social psychology since it is strongly directed towards finding and fixing problems rather than mere analysis. So we can say that community psychology is a holistic and system based approach to understanding behavior and how people fit into the society. Community psychology based all its research and action on solid empiricism. And there are two types of community psychology interventions and they are ameliorative and transformative. Ameliorative interventions are those which aim to promote well-being. While transformative interventions also aim to promote well-being, it also focuses on changing power relationships 
and strives to eliminate oppression. It is much like the first and second order change where first order change uh, try, focuses only on the individual where the second order strives to change the system and its assumption. And the two interventions also differs in its process and framing of issues and problems, its prevention focus and the desired outcome. For example, ameliorative interventions are often expert driven. The community psychologist uses her or his knowledge of risk and protective factors and program models to design the intervention. While the community psychologist may play the leadership role in designing ameliorative intervention, there is also collaboration with multiple stakeholders from the community. Whereas the intervention program in Transformative involves a partnership in which community psychologist works in solidarity with oppressed groups and possibly other stakeholders from the community. And ameliorative interventions tend to frame issues and problems as technical matters that can be resolved through rational empirical problem solving. For, and power dynamics are completely ignored in this formulation. So if we take an example of teen pregnancy, ameliorative intervention would look at how it would impact the individual's life, the failure to complete education or gain employment, mental health, drug and alcohol problem. Whereas transformative intervention on the other hand, frame issues and problems in terms of oppression and inequities and power. While research and problem solving are used to address the problem, the overall focus is on liberation from oppression and changing the social systems that give rise to teen pregnancy. Now coming to see how these two interventions focuses on the levels of analysis, ameliorative interventions examine issues and problems in terms of an ecological perspective that is attuned to multiple levels of analysis. However, interventions are often targeted at in individual and relational level. And prevention programs strive to enhance competence and build social support. Whereas in transformative interventions, issues or problems are examined in terms of power dynamics that are conceptualized as occurring at multiple levels of analysis. For example, macro level health promotion interventions may aim to change social norm and practices regarding eating, drinking, smoking and exercise to prevent heart disease or other health problems. And issues of power and exploitation such as the role of tobacco components in promoting nicotine addiction or the fast food industry uh, like McDonald's and Coca-Cola in promoting poor diet and obesity are seldom addressed. So if we see ameliorative intervention programs primarily address the individual factors including coping skills, self-esteem and support system. The risk factor includes both biological and environmental systemic factors and transformative preventive interventions strive to address systemic factors including racism, sexism, poverty, and mostly community psychology pro uh, prevention programs are ameliorative in nature and do not address this macro system risk factors. So these two interventions also differ in its outcome. Ameliorative intervention focuses at the individual levels of analysis. So the primary desired outcome of it is enhanced well-being which is conceptualized apolitically and narrowly at the individual level. And a specific outcome includes the promotion of individual well-being, which includes self-esteem, independence, competence, etc. Whereas outcomes of multiple levels of analysis that emphasize power sharing and equity are in the foreground of transformative intervention. And the primary desired outcome of it is enhanced well-being, which is conceptualized in terms of power at multiple levels of analysis. And specific outcome includes personal changes for example, increased control, choice, self-esteem, etc. And the relational changes include enhanced socially supportive relationships, freedom from abuses and violence, and the acquisition of value resources like employment, income, education, housing, etc. So in conclusion, we see that community psychology focuses not only on individual, but also on the community and society at large to address any problems or issues. And the Scam Scott Conference and the Division 27 called the Society for Community Research and Action 
has played a significant role in establishing community psychology as a separate branch within psychology and community psychology bases its research and action on strong empiricism.